Hello folks and welcome to a brand new tutorial on how to create Minecraft 2D using GameMaker 8. This is part 3 of the Minecraft series and today we'll be adding a similar version from Infinite Terrain. Why do I say that so weird? Well, it's not really infinite because if we walk like half an hour one direction, our computer will finally lag. So it's not really infinite, but it's an attempt to. So don't get too precise on this. On this. So let's get started right away. Uh, let's go to our uh, script world gen and ease all these variables. Um, we have like variable this, variable this, variable this, variable this, and we will be adding a lot more variables. So let's just put it in one variable. Just like that, and then delete all this. And like I said, we'll be adding a lot more variables, so let's add some variables. Let's add our starting room and our ending room. This is already our starting room, well, our starting height, but now we will add like this value of our uh, starting room. So starting room equals argument zero. You probably have uh, already seen this on uh, the Real Touch GML page. Well, this is a bit different. Uh, not the rendering, but everything that holds it together. So uh, you can follow his tutorials or mine tutorials. Um, it's really what whatever you like. So let's uh, return our ending room, and um, we got now a room width and our zero. So this script will uh, execute it on zero and our room width but uh, like I said on the previous tutorial I want to be totally independent on our room so if we oh I'm sorry so if we look at this uh, and we take a look at this our view it's totally independent on our room so let's do that with this like that now our zero defines our argument zero and our ending room defines our argument zero plus this value and then we're going to return it so um let's uh let, let's let, let me show you how this works let's open a paint so imagine that um this is our view and this is our chunk which created and here's our Steve and uh, once Steve is here uh, our view will be uh, like like here right but then the chunk size will just stop here so this is our chunk here and uh, Steve will fall down right so this position needs to be our ending room and this obviously our start but when Steve is here, this will be our new start of the world generation. So every time when uh, Steve gets on a certain position of uh, his current chunk, a new chunk will be rendered on the ending position of the current chunk Steve is walking in. I hope you get that. For me, it's it's uh, it's clear and all, but um, take a look good, take a good look at how this works and how our um, how uh, our how this is how this gets initialized and all that stuff, and uh, I I think um, you'll be able to to see what's going on, and uh, yeah, so uh, good luck with that, <laughs> and let's create another script. This is our render script, and in our render script, we will we will just uh, deactivate all objects. Well, at least our block objects, because we don't want to deactivate our Steve. Because if we do that, then the world generation won't be initialized again. Well, it will be in here, but only once. We we don't get a render thing, and then instance activate 
region and this is our um, our region not our room region but our view so first we get like our X view minus 64 and then we get our Y view minus 64 and then we get our width view plus 96 and then we get our H view 0 oh. plus 96 and make it true I'm sorry, like that. And that is our render. So we want to be able of, uh, we want that the render is constantly uh, rendering. So we will put the render scripts in our build generation step event. And um, this we got, we got now in our creation world generation object, we got standing this here, but make it argument zero and also randomize randomize this is not necessary because in our uh, script world gen we will also already um, use like random variables and all that stuff later on so this is not necessary um, but if you do this your game seed will even be more random so you can add this or leave it whatever you whatever you like and then we will define our chunk well we will first create a new um, variable but global chunk 2 is global chunk so we create a new variable chunk and we uh, define it by a uh, script uh, our world generation script argument 0 and then go to our no let's first go to creation event and say that render is true and then go to our step event here step event yeah there it is and scroll all the way down and create mm, uh, if statements global facing is one and then another if statement if x is equals or sorry greater global dot chunk divided by two and render then render is going to be false temporary and global chunk equals script world gen global dot chunk and then render is going to be put back to true else copy this paste it in else if global facing is minus one x smaller or equal as Oh, misspelled something there. Didn't see that. Uh, chunk 2, chunk 2, chunk 2, and then minus um, this. And this is 3, 4, 5, 6. That, that's it. That's everything. That's that's so easy. It's it's unbelievable. So let's run the game here. Waiting for when it's loaded. There it is. And a new chunk is created. And we got a client cliff here. Uh, we'll fix that in the um, in the the next tutorial.
the next tutorial is going to be random um, generation improvements and uh, I'm not talking about um, m minerals and all that stuff because we'll be adding that a bit later and uh, we'll add water and uh, the, I think this looks pretty bad this this whole area uh, it needs to be more random well I think it needs to be more random so um, we'll, we'll add like a random a code for the stone level and the dirt level here and it's kinda lagging now let's close it yeah I'm loading another um, file here where you can see it see it's a bit more random here so um, we'll be adding that later uh, well on the next tutorial so um, yeah I see you in the next tutorial random terrain generation improvements see you later